presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Sun. Corey Dickerson and Logan Morrison are both enjoying bounce back seasons with the Rays, with Corey leading the American League in hits. While Lomo's 21 home runs tie him for third in the major leagues. Today, this dynamic duo looks to power the Rays to a series victory over slugger Joy Votto and the Cincinnati Reds. The Wednesday showdown is driven by GMC. This afternoon at Tropicana Field, the Rays series against Cincinnati continues. Cincinnati, the first club in on this six game homestand. This will be game three between the Rays and the Cincinnati Reds. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to an afternoon of Rays baseball with the rest is Destrada and Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. Well, the Rays and the Reds go at it. The Rays in 12 series have lost only one. They've split three, they've won eight. This one divided down the middle at one and one, so they're going for a series victory. And with that in mind, they're going to have a little speed at the top of the lineup. Malik Smith is back in there. Well, it's apropos when you're talking about Dwayne, a Cincinnati Reds team that's led by one of the fastest guys in the game, and Billy Hamilton, that we're trying to match stroke for stroke or speed for speed. And this kid has been outstanding ever since KK Kevin Kermeyer Ker Ker went down with his injury. We've brought back up Malik Smith. And I think Dwayne that the fact that he was already here had a little taste of this franchise, a little taste of this league has been a lot more comfortable. And some of the things that I'm noticing, not just obviously the speed, but actually the hitting prowess. I, in spring training, didn't see some of the things that he's doing right now, hitting the opposite field, hitting the ball with authority, and he's feeling very, very comfortable. Well, here's the pitching matchup. Erasmo Ramirez trying to turn things around. He comes in with an earned run average of 648 in seven starts this year, two and two in those starts. He's three and two overall. Tim Adelman, the right hander, will be on the hill for the Cincinnati Reds with a mark of four and three. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at the bounce back duo. The Rays have Logan Morrison hitting home runs and Corey Dickerson setting up those run scoring situations and driving in a few runs himself. Rich Hollenberg will have more on that.
weeks till the All-Star game in Miami. The Rays find themselves in the thick of the playoff picture as we get set for the Reds and the Rays. And that playoff picture is becoming clearer for the Rays, thanks in large part to two key players who have had bounce back years in their second seasons with the Rays. One is Corey Dickerson, the other is Logan Morrison. Corey Dickerson has been an all-star from the outset, leading the American League in hits with 93, also leading the league in extra base hits with 39. He's clutch with runners on base hit and 362 with runners in scoring position. And he's what I like to call splitless. He hits lefties at a 344 clip and righties at a 319 clip. But he's not the only one who's been hitting lights out for the Rays. Logan Morrison at first base and DHing has been dynamic. He's one of just four players in all of baseball with at least 40 walks and at least 20 home runs. His 21 home runs are currently third in all of Major League Baseball, and their manager, Kevin Cash, knows just how worthy of an all-star nod both these players have been. Well, they, they have. They've had up to this point all-star seasons, and I think they all get there a little differently. Um, both those guys were obviously uh, acquired last year, new teammates, new surroundings. Um, took some time to settle in, but, but they've done a nice job. And Dickerson batting second and DHing today. Morrison at cleanup playing first. Those two and the rest of the Rays look to win their eighth getaway game in their last 10 tries. When we come back under three minutes to go, Dwayne and the Big O with the call on Fox Sports Sun next. Up game in this series, Parks and Recreation Day. The Rays and the Reds have divided the first two games. We're all set to play baseball with the Rasmo Ramirez delivering the first pitch and a cut and a miss by Billy Hamilton. So we are underway here this afternoon at Tropicana Field. Quick look at the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Hamilton at the top of the order, followed by Janet and then Votto. Down the middle, Duvall, Suarez, and Schembler. Zarocco will catch at seventh. Winker is the DH. Peraza 
at shortstop batting ninth. Long hit on the ground to second. Featherston's up with it. That takes care of the speedy Hamilton one away. Great to keep him off the bases. Oh yes it is and great for uh, uh, Ramirez to start like that because uh, he's notoriously not been very good a with the leadoff batter in any inning they're hitting over 400 against him and B just first inning jitters he just has had a whale of a time pretty much all season long but lately in these issues as you see right there uh, his ERA has gone skyrocket over five when he was looking really good in April and May and he just kind of has taken a turn here one positive thing though. He has pitched well at home, 3 0 with a much better ERA than on the road at 329. He faces Scooter Jeanette. Pitch is down. Rasmus coming off the tough outing on the road against Detroit. He's trying to turn that trend around. And the thing about Ramirez, and we think about Adelman as well, both these pitchers. Are pretty efficient when you look at pitch counts per inning and Erasmo under 15 pitches per inning. In fact, he had that tough outing in Detroit, pitched four and two thirds, gave up 10 runs, and only made 78 pitches. Incredible. Yeah, and he works fast. He's kind of in that mode of a little more old school in the sense of give me the ball, I throw three or four different pitches. They're all kind of around the plate, and I'm trying to deke you a little bit into miss hitting. I pitch the contact. I'll get my strikeouts every now and then, but I'm not looking to strike you out. And he works very fast. Upstairs, two and two. That's a topic I think we ought to get into at some point today, particularly from your hitter's perspective about pitchers who work fast and pitchers who work slow. And we'll have time to do that this afternoon. I think it's. Uh, it's developed into an interesting conversation around baseball. So foul ball back by Jeanette. From the Maddoxes to the Rick Sutcliffs, I guess you could go there. Yeah, they, absolutely. They both kind yeah. of were, you know, really extremes. And and why that is, we will get into that because there there is a there's a method to all those guys' mad, madness uh, as to why a certain pitcher, especially if you've been successful, why they do that. Popped into shallow left. Robertson starts out. Smith coming in. And he's there to make the catch. The defensive setup for the Rays presented by your Golden Diamond Source. Smith, as we saw, is in left field. Borges, the veteran outfielder, and a good one in center field. Steven Souza Jr. in right. Around the infield, Evan Longoria with the day off. Ploofs at third, Robertson at short, Featherston at second, and Morrison at first. Sucre catching the day game after the night game. That is very interesting right there. An early night an early day game, by the way, but he is he is a beast. Joey Votto takes the pitch too low. Votto with 20 home runs. His home run in the ninth inning. It interesting, and a couple of hits following that made it really interesting. But the Rays hung on and won that game six to five. And he's out in front of that pitch, one and one. Joey Votto is so much fun to watch up at the plate. I mean, we don't get to see him much, Dwayne, because he's in the other league. But uh, just the, his style, what he tries to do up there, how calculated he is. This one is. Hit well, but foul. It's one and two. Let's take a look at that home run he hit in the ninth inning last night. He looked fastball first pitch on Colome, got it. Not using a whole lot of his body, it's his quick hands. He gets his front foot down quickly. He's gone to that choke up uh, Barry Bonds kind of uh, approach, but still with power, a la Bonds. Uh, and I just, you know, he's a guy that always walked a lot. Bounce it back. I don't know about you, but I. One of the beautiful things about this game is the rich history. I love seeing video clips of hitters, players in general, pitchers, but hitters in the 40s and 50s and 60s. You could see him. That's what it is. In a uniform and in the 40s and 50s yeah. and early 60s. Found this one right again on him. Totally. I mean, 
some of the bigger home run guys from back in the day they choked up they looked they thought of it as like well I'm just going to try to have a shorter swing I'm trying to get the barrel of the bat on the ball so what's my best chance and he's out on strikes change up got him three up three down or headed into the bottom of the first no score. A good first inning for Rasmo Ramirez. Take a look at the starting lineup for the race presented by your Southern Four Dealers. Alex Smith is going to lead it off. He's in left field today, followed by Corey Dickerson and Steven Susan Jr. Logan Morris in the cleanup man with Trevor Blue at third. Daniel Robertson at shortstop. Taylor Fredlickston is the second baseman. He'll hit seventh in front of Peter Borges and Jesus Supre. The catcher bounce ninth. And the big right hander, 6'5, 225 pounds, Tim, Tim Adelman. We'll talk hopefully quite a bit about this guy because he kind of is one of those, Dwayne, that you, you, you got to feel good about. I mean, he, he fought through getting to the big leagues through one of those guys that didn't do it the conventional way. I mean, got drafted and then got released by the Orioles. And then he, he came through uh, in, her, in the, the independent leagues. And Smith took that first pitch for a ball down and in. There's a strike, and the count is one and one. Well, an 11 game hitting streak from Alex Smith. Pushing 400 for the life of that streak. Pops it up foul. Now to play. One and two. You know, we've got the, in this first inning a chance to see a couple of high energy guys. Uh, Joey Votto wasn't happy about striking out. He's pretty intense. And then you lead off the bottom of the first with Malik Smith. Yes, sir. And he's all about energy. I don't think he gets as upset as Joey Votto does, but uh, he definitely can run like Billy Hamilton. And a cut and a miss. He is out on strikes. And we'll set. The defensive alignment for Cincinnati. Adam Duvall is going to be in left with Billy Hamilton in center. Scott Shetler is the right fielder. Suarez in third. Peraz is short. Jeanette in second. Votto over at first. Mazzarocco behind the plate. Catching Adelman. Solid defense, especially in the corners when you got Votto and, and, and Suarez with an exceptional arm. Behind the plate, strong too, with Devin. Like I said, Adelman is a guy that's maybe more of a you think of a reliever, spot starter, but he's come in the mix now with all the injuries, and that's one of the reasons I think you see him. He still throws from the stretch, Dwayne, but he's a fastball in the low 90s, very very good curveball, and he'll drop a changeup on you. But as you said before, either of these two starters kind of are missing their zone. They're going to get hit hard. 1-0 the count to Corey Dickerson. 
up in the count two and nothing. Lattleman started in a conventional way out of Georgetown. Drafted by the Orioles a couple of years in their system and then spent the uh, stints in Lincoln, El Paso, and in New Jersey in the independent leagues. It's up the right side, pulled foul, going to be out of play. Signed on with Cincinnati. That's the termination. You know, he just a couple of quick years with, with Baltimore, probably more of a local product pick by the Orioles, you know, a Georgetown guy, and didn't work out. You were gone, and many guys they hang it up, but he did a couple of years in the independent leagues working it out. Two one, and Dickerson fouls it the other way. And he's got a nice little run going for him lately. Check this out. Yeah, no, it really has turned around for him. Uh, you see, you know, again, both guys uh, between Erasmo and, and Adelman going opposite directions. And right now, Adelman's figured out how to mix his fastball with that really electric curveball of his. Fastball fouled back, still two and two. There, he'll be heavy with the fastball. 60% with that. Location a key, and then the, as you mentioned, the change and curveball. Count is full now. Cincinnati has some good hard throwers, don't they? They got some young arms. Youngest team in baseball. A little over 26 years old average, and we're seeing a lot of these youngsters out of the pen. These infielders, they're free swingers. 3 2 popped up. Sirocco's after it. Third base side. Now he'll come back, and that ball falls untouched. It's going to be a no play. Well, it's consistent with what the series has been as far as. Uh, up, anything up in the air has been problematic for the Reds, but also for our team, too. Well, it hit the ring up there. He thought he had uh, a beat on he that. He thought one. he had a beat. And that, it hit the ring, and then uh, that misdirected everything. Welcome to the trot, Mr. Mesoraco. He's He had to take everything off and put it back on. It was just a, it was a, just a debacle for him. So Dickerson gets another chance there. What turns out to be, technically speaking, a no play. Ground ball, that's just foul outside the first base bag and up the line. I had a good talk with uh, with Corey after the game yesterday a little lot 10 talk on our way out. I asked him about choking up and he's so interesting. I love his dynamic and I love talking hitting with him because depends on the pitcher depends on the situation like right now I think he feels very comfortable with this uh, right hander. Maybe he looked at some film. He says this is a guy maybe he's faced him you know before he came over here and he's not doing the choke up thing he did against certain other pitchers and yesterday we saw him do kind of the Joey Votto shorter choke up scenario and I said why are you choking up now and he goes well with certain pitchers I want to remind myself not to chase and that would be more with a with a left hander going away from him. and he draws the walk extended it bat there the Rays have a base runner Dickerson heads to first one on with one out Steven Suda Jr. on his way to the plate Here's another guy that probably Dwayne will not make the all-star team. He voted in, but man, he's had quite the first half. If you take away uh, a kind of a dismal second month of the season where he went into a little slide, maybe probably with all those hand injuries that he had, he came out rocking in April, and he's back on point here in, in June and uh, having a wonderful season. Seven-game hitting streak snapped in the game last night. Because after that first pitch fastball up just a little above the zone and he was ready to jump on that. 
Souza has shown that he'll be a streaky hitter. Oh my. And and the idea is to try to make those those downsides a little shorter. And even things out but boy when he gets hot good luck getting him out. One of the best hitters in the major leagues right now as far as when he's on fire because you, you know this great all around you know Harper and Trout and Miggy Cabrera they're always seem to seemingly hot but when this guy gets flared up he's he's something to watch. Ground ball foul he broke his bat that pitch just foul outside of third. And a lot of people may you know don't realize a lot of times when the veteran players and you, you, you've been around it a lot with like baggy shirts and, and, and their uniforms now they tend to use it more baggy. How big some of these guys are how physically strong and fit. I did a clinic with with uh, Susan Jr. about a month ago with some kids and he just had like a T-shirt on and he was talking and he's just like a linebacker. I mean he's just really kind of well built and in great condition and also having a phenomenal year in the outfield too he prides himself with his defense. Ooh, strike three call. That outside part of the plate. Susan thought it might have been a little bit off and he is caught looking. That one looked uh, a little bit away but no you know what that was that was borderline but might have crossed over the outside part of the plate it was a heck of a little sliders cut fastball pitch nice job by Adam I see where he's bettered his game when you go up and in like he did in the first couple pitches and then break him away like that Logan Morrison takes the pitch for a ball a couple of strikeouts here and a walk in the first inning from Tim Adelman Morrison starting the day with 21 home runs Tied for second in the league in that department. And leads the team with 49 runs batted in. Here we are as you break out the major league leaders. Aaron Judge topping the list. Tony Bellinger with the Dodgers 22, and then back to the American League. Morrison and Springer tied with 21. Back into center field. Hamilton will go back and make the catch before he gets to the track. Craig's going to walk, leave a man, do not score, and we go to the second. No score. Dealer. By GMC, we are professional grade. By Jeep, get great deals at the Jeep Spring Clearance event. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. 
Adam Duvall leads off. That's a strike call on the outside part of the plate. Strikeout in the first inning for Erasmo Ramirez. You got Votto on the changeup. First pitch strike in to clean up man to ball. One and one. Suarez next and then Shebler. No rest for the weary. For the middle part of this lineup, really up and down the lineup. Oof. They have uh, threats of one kind or another and some power in the middle part. All you have to do is look at the slugging percentages and, and you start that with Jeanette, interestingly yeah. enough. Number he's two over, he's over five and a yeah. half, 553 <laughs> slugging percentage. Votto at 603, Duvall 538, Suarez 483, then Chevler 541. Masarocco hits behind him and he's got some pop. You know, and it, it makes sense because an organization is going to mold themselves and scout along with their ballpark. So this is an organization that looks for beefy guys that swing hard, hit a lot of fly balls, and can and can pull. Back to the hill. The underhanded toss to first. Got there. Run away. He went through that for a good little while and they're kind of on the upswing again with the Rockies where they always seem seemingly had some some big boppers for that perfect stadium at Coors Field. You got the same thing over there in Cincinnati. It's a bad box and uh, all they're doing is bringing in. I mean they've gotten rid of guys like Jay Bruce's and some of the other you know uh, Todd Frazier we just saw in, in, in Chicago. Same build. They're, they're stocky all about six to swing very hard. Whereas another guy with a good bat, he takes a strike. He's at 11 home runs this year. He's taken over third base. Yes, he sure has, and uh, and I really like him at third base too. He's very smooth, exceptional arm. Headed to short. Robertson's throw is right there on the money. A little comebacker by Duvall, and Suarez the ground ball handled by Daniel Robertson at shortstop. He's figured to be without Beckham for a couple of days at least. Hit on the left hand with a pitch the other night, and they're without uh, Corey Rasmus. Yeah. They're resting him. They don't want to push that hip situation that he had. I think that's smart. He's been such an addition. I mean, I mean, really incredible job. More than I thought, honestly, that that that. Or call Colby Rasmus going to be bringing to the table. The we'll strike to Shepner, but when you think about it, and, and you know as a hitter, the torque that's involved in the mid torso and the hips, and he swings hard. I mean, he's not up there trying no. to just put the ball into play. He's trying to launch on almost every pitch. But he's run well. He's played great outfield. Uh, been a seemingly a, a really nice addition teammate-wise. He's brought a lot to the table here. And one of the things that I, I like about this team is the makeup of the particular role players and he's he's fitting in nicely. One one to count on Shepler. The left side that'll be a foul ball. Uh, he'll get a new bat. He's broken about three or four bats already this series. <laughs> Shepler goes through some bats. But that's why the bat boy was literally close by. I mean they always have their bats ready but. His type of swing, it's a little different. And and here comes the uh it's park and rex day. The park and rex day. The boom sticks I, right. I, I thought it was Justin Bieber that might have walked into the stadium or something, but no, it's just the uh the boom sticks. But this guy is one of my favorites as far as his setup. It's a little unorthodox, but he uncoils on pitches. Two and two. Well, the combo, and you know, we highlighted in the uh, pregame and in the stand-up comments, Morrison and Dickerson for the Rays. Well, it's sort of been Votto and Shebler sure. this year for Cincinnati. 39 home runs they've combined for. Um, you know, Duval obviously right behind them, but 
Line drive, and it's grabbed right there. Shevler lines to the left side. Three up, three down, no score. Republic Bank Draft Room exclusively for rates and season ticket holders. Blends hospitality and comfort, offering local craft beers and themed signature food items. Tropicana Field's premier destination area exclusively for season ticket holders for the Rays. Called 888 Fan Rays. Remember, Plouffe pops it up. That ball comes back fair. And caught down there for the first down. Pitch one away here in the second. Whereas the third baseman made the catch on that. Now Daniel Robertson. Robertson with five homers, 218 on the year. Both these pitchers are ready to go. Yes, sir. Good pitchers for a noon getaway day for Cincinnati. Because uh, he gets it. Look at that. He's he's taking the sign. I mean, he was almost like getting like batting practice. He got the ball. He was almost ready to throw the pitch. So I wanted one and back to that. You know, now some pitchers used to be, I think, pretty universal. Pitchers were encouraged to take advantage of the fact that they're initiating that confrontation between a pitcher and a hitter. You set the pace. Don't let that hitter control the moment. Right. You control the moment as the pitcher. But it's different now. Totally In different. In so many cases where a pitcher is going to take a lot of time between pitches. Robertson caught looking right there. Third strikeout for Adelman. As a hitter for you, did it bother you if you went up against a guy who worked as quickly as these guys? It would depends. you would step yeah, out on him? I would step out of him. if you're yeah. facing a guy who takes. 30 seconds between pitches. Correct. What's your take on that? Yeah, I would get upset at that too. But almost, almost as upset. Uh, but you would just see more the, the 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 latter. You know, you would see the situation where where you would have a guy that was working too fast for you. And usually, usually, the premise of working really fast is a guy that has multiple pitches is working in and out, changing speeds and changing locations. So then he's got you off balance quite a bit. You're like, okay, that was fastball in, fastball in, now fastball away, and now you're kind of you're, you're off. I mean, the master and the best of all time, arguably, was Greg Maddox, who would just kind of get you in, get the ball, and he had four quality pitches, if not five, that, and he always had you kind of like in his cadence. Now you get a slower pace guy like a Doc Gooden. He wanted you to think because he was two pitch pitcher. He was a nasty hard curveball and 99 mile an hour fastball 
and you're up there going, oh man, what's coming now? And he had you guess, you know, he, he I think he used that to his advantage as opposed to trying to run up there 99 really quickly. So what I hear you say that if, if a guy's basically a two pitch pitcher he might have another one in his sure. pocket somewhere but basically a, a limited variety of pitches and it may be to his advantage to take a longer time. But if you've got a guy with conventional stuff or a number of pitches he wants to set the pace totally. and, and control the moment. Yeah. I mean and that's why I said Maddox and Sutcliffe who Sutcliffe was pretty much a fastball. He would mix a change up and a big curveball. And and he spotted his fastball pretty well better than most. But the guys that don't spot their fastball well, I would I would think they'd want to take their time a little bit because if you're throwing the same fastball in the same place over and over, it does become batting practice for the hit. Strike three call. Featherston caught looking at a fastball. Four strikeouts through the first two for Adelman. Third, one of the spotlight community partners for the Tampa Bay Rays as a franchise is Feeding Tampa Bay. I'm joined by Executive Director Thomas Mance from Feeding Tampa Bay. Tell us a little bit about the relationship with your organization and the Rays. The Rays have been longtime partners of ours. They've helped us move an awful lot of meals into the community. Feeding Tampa Bay's main goal is to put a meal on a table where one is needed, and the Rays have uh, helped us for, with that for years. Uh, how can people watching right now at home get involved if they're not working for the Rays as an organization? The greatest gift you can give is a gift of your time. Come volunteer. We're a volunteer based organization. You could go to feedingtampabay.org. You can find out how to come volunteer with us and, and help us uh, take care of our neighbors and friends. As usual, the Rays spreading the magic of baseball with community partners like yes. Feeding Tampa Bay. Dwayne? All right, thank you very much. Top of the third inning here, Mazzarocco leading it off, and Erasmo Ramirez ahead of him in the count one and two. And the changeup, strike two. Is that on Vado to strike him out? Upstairs, two balls, two strikes. That's the thing about uh, Ramirez. He'll throw the change up to lefties or righties oh, or totally. to lefties, but it's still in play against a right handed hitter. Well, it has to be for him. That's, that's actually one of his key arsenals is the, the deke of a change up. There it is again. And, and it's a beautiful spinning change up because it, it, it really does come at you and almost just stops literally, but keeps on kind of at the same plane and then drops. Now, the difference has been lately is that there it is. See a good spin to it is that he's it's been not dropping Dwayne enough at that tail end and it's been staying up a little too high. Yeah and that last pitch we showed that was one that of was those a dangerous that's a dangerous you're a little concerned about yeah, that right right and it has been I mean his last five starts I will say they were four of them were on the road he's been really good at home 
uh, this year, three and zero, oh, and a sub three year A. Like I told you, a little excuse me, three two ninety ERA. But he's just been missing dramatically since that fifteen inning game that he came in the close. Now strike three call throws him on a fastball. So he saw that off speed stuff, and then here's ninety three all of a sudden. Yeah, and then Mazarasco, he uh, he kind of shook his head. He goes, "Yeah, you got me." I was looking for that changeup, and you got me because I was froze completely. See, it's that same play. So the fastball, it's good example right there because that that changeup is basically on that same little play. You just want a little bit of a more of a dip to it. But as a hitter, it all looks the same, but it's not. It's smoke and mirrors. See Winker, the DH, and he looks at a strike. Fastball starts him. Winker up from Triple A and was in the lineup here on Monday night. Drove in a couple of runs with a base hit, went one for five. Looks it back into center. Moore just right there for it. Two up, two down. Well, let's take a look at the uh, Toyota inside look and the breakout on Erasmo Ramirez and his seven starts this year. That's pretty reflective. And what's happened recently here in the last four? Yeah, it is definitely the last four. Uh, the last five outings were that 28th of May when he closed out a dramatic win uh, on the road for for the Rays on for a 15 inning game, and then the very next day he started in Texas, and it seemed like I don't know that just kind of got him in a bad mojo scenario, and he's been missing ever since, Dwayne. And the starts have just been not as crisp as it was before that. Peraza chasing that pitch. I will say, I think this is a, a huge start for him. It's a good start for him. It's a day game after a night game. It's a free swinging team. If he he's pitched well at home, so there's a lot of confidence for him. If he gets his game in the right places, he can navigate through a good six innings here. This is a game that's kind of molded for an Erasmo Ramirez with the type of hitters and the type of day that it is. You might get him a little sleepier. And uh, and work fast and, and do it. We, we talked about that both sides of, of the of the mound today are kind of similar pitchers. And he has Peraza reaching the change. Two and two. Ramirez has retired the first eight to face him. Conversely, Adelman has retired six of the first seven he has faced with Cincinnati. Up there. What you don't want today is a guy like Hellickson pitching it. <laughs> <laughs> Who used to just drive yeah. us crazy over here and how long he, he would take. take. A long time. He was a rain delay. And on a, and a 12 o'clock getaway day, I think uh, you know his own teammates would be like, come on. And a cut the miss. Peraza strikes out back with the off speed with the change. Two strikeouts in the inning. Three through the first three. Take a look at the strikeout pitch. Back in the hand and the changeup gets him. We are scoreless.
we go to the bottom of the third inning. No score in this one. Rays facing the right hander Tim Adelman and Peter Borges takes the first pitch. One ball no strikes Borges hitting eighth he'll be followed by Jesus Sucre and then Malik Smith. One. All speed from Adelman. And a strike. Both these pitchers setting a very rapid pace. Two and two. He's feeling good. Had a couple of good innings. Rasmo has uh, worked fast. Changeup seems to be on the point today, and uh, that's key for him to get off to a good start right now. Oh and strike three call. Another strikeout. That's five in this game for Adelman. Time for the big story around the major leagues. Youth being served when it comes to home runs. We. Followed Aaron Judge in the American League with 24 home runs, the latest in the season that rookies have led both leagues. And look what Cody Bellinger is doing for the Dodgers 22 home runs over there. Sucre takes the first pitch for a ball. And Bellinger spent uh, most of his time last year in double A. He yeah. 26 home runs in the minor leagues and three of them were in Oklahoma City at Triple A. Great swing for that left handed kid. He is something special. But really, you're talking about big story. You can't get any bigger than what Bright Lights, Big City, New York City, Aaron Judge is doing at 6'8. Yeah, he's, uh, he's making a race. Triple Crown. Yeah, triple Crown. D. Wayne, I mean, he's doing some special stuff. And, and doing it at the Yankee level or the New York City level. And the other thing is, you know, easy. last year he struck out half the time. Yeah. Half the time. It's a whole different swing, though. It's a whole different. They really honed in on slowing him down, shortening him up. Because when you're that big, I was 6'4", when you're that big, every all the movement is so complicated and it's so long that you need to try to shorten your stride and just get that Meat of the bat on the ball, and sometimes he'll even look like he miss hits one, and it goes 395 to right center, and it's out. He's a uh, he's a he's a beast. Full count on Sucre, and the Rays are going to get a base runner here. Second walk of the day issued by Adel. Five strikeouts, two walks. Go to the top of the lineup for the Rays. Malik Smith. Malik struck out his first time. There's a little looper and a short left. That's going to bounce out of the reach of Peraza. Just enough. Perfectly placed. And there's a base hit. <laughs> that was just beautiful. All you can do is smile as a hitter when that happens. He, First hit of the game for either club. He nubs this one, miss hits it, and, he, and as soon as he sees where he hits it, he goes, oh, man, this is beautiful. Because there was nobody there, and Malik Smith goes, yeah, buddy. That's the way you keep a hitting streak alive. It's 12 in a row now. How about that, huh? You get you get called up. You need to replace some big shoes, big gloves of uh, Kevin Kiermaier, big bat too, because KK was actually swinging it, and he just not, does nothing but go on a 12-game hitting streak right off the bat. Here's Corey Dickerson. So the Rays with a threat. Dickerson sends it into right. Chempler on the run is going to make the catch. 
and the runners will stay at first and second. Dickerson lines to right. You know, he took a little bit off that fastball. I don't think it was a changeup. I think it was kind of like purposefully through a more of a little two seamer 89 mile an hour fastball instead of the 91 92. And he got him just enough out in front, Dwayne. And, and he didn't smoke it. He hit it well, but, but not uh, where, where he normally hits it. It's up to Steven Susie Jr. if the Rays had to do anything with this opportunity. Two outs now. It was a call out on strikes his first time on a pitch he thought was a little wide. Swing and a miss. Fastball. I will say this is an interesting dynamic brewing in the bases here with two outs. <laughs> with who's in front of who. Yeah, could you switch those guys uh, around? Well, he's gonna run right over his back. I think he might run right right through Sucre, possibly if there's a gapper hit. You got Malik Smith that I think on one leg could probably run faster than Sucre on two. And he's just looking over there like a he's almost like a like, like a cheetah or a lion kind of waiting to run. And then you got Sucre over here. It's more like a fun loving buffalo. A shot back into left. New ball's gonna go back. It's off the wall. That will score Sucre. Smith makes a big turn, throw to second, now back into third, and he's back there head first. Duvall's throw to second. Sucre scores. The Rays break out in front one to nothing. And that throw came back to second. Malik Smith made an aggressive turn around third. Duvall saw that and fired to third, but he got back in plenty of time. There's that two-seamer, almost the very same pitch that he, that he got Corey Dickerson to be out in front of. Sousa is a little out in front of that pitch, too, but watch it, Malik Smith. Malik Smith he just is thinking run 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 until you finally stop me but he's quick enough to get back. We've seen that already happen a couple of times with him that he'll he'll think score until Charlie finally holds him. Logan Morrison takes the first pitch inside. And I like that aggressiveness. We don't get to see that that much as long as you're you know well, that's athletic. what we were talking about early in the, yeah. in the uh, game that. with that energy. You've got a high energy guy there. That's pressuring the defense. Yeah, that's pressuring the defense. Well, right back into the screen, one and one. You know, and in a day when you've got a lot of guys trying to get the ball airborne, hit home runs, it's a nice element to have in I your lineup. It. It's not only an exciting element, but it's one you can really use to your advantage. And we've seen the excitement level go up in this race lined up with his arrival. You, you got, as you mentioned, he's replacing Kiermaier. Kiermaier exciting too. Absolutely. And now this guy comes up. A couple of great elements to add to a club. Time granted just as Adelman was ready to make the delivery. Well, there's a situation that Adelman is actually not working really fast. He's taking his time a little bit. He wants to make sure and be calculated about how, what pitch he's throwing, where he's throwing it. And also remember now you're talking about one one count maybe with two strikes talking about that interesting new dynamic you may see a, a double steal here situation develop. Ground ball to first and it's grabbed by Votto. A nice play on that ball to retire the side but the Rays get a run and break out in front at the end of three one nothing.
Tom brought to you by your Southern Chevy dealers. By Jeep, get great deals at the Jeep Spring Clearance event. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Rays and Erasmo Ramirez have a one nothing lead through three. We go to the fourth. And the first pitch to Hamilton just misses. Really Hamilton the leadoff man. Ramirez has retired the first nine to face him. So he starts the second time through the order. Hamilton fouls it back one and one. Jeanette next and then Votto. This one is outside two and one you like the defensive setup. Well I Malik Smith is playing pretty much deep short I think <laughs> on Billy Hamilton. There's a whole lot of real estate behind him. But you know what the reality is that the Hamilton is is uh, not an impressive hitter so far at the major league level. He's he's OK. Imagine if he could hit 280 or 290. He would steal. He, we'd be going back to the Vince Coleman days of 100 stolen bases. Yep. But, he's going to take the count to three and two. Big cut right there at three one. His on base percentage is hovering around 300. Yeah, right now actually under. It's, yeah. It was, it was 291 coming in. That's his on base percentage. And he draws the walk. So Speaking of that, that's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, you've retired nine in a row. You get yes. the lead one nothing. Now you got the fastest guy going. Ouch. And you walk in to start the inning. That's the last thing Ramirez wanted to do. And a guy that that you, you want him to put the ball in play. He's not a dangerous hitter. Only one, I think Leo has one home run. So it, 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 in order to bring up these mashers that are coming behind him. Scooter Jeanette. One strike. Nine home runs for Jeanette. One of the things that uh, I've, I've found interesting about how Hamilton takes a lead. He's from the school of perpetual motion. If you watch him, he keeps on moving his feet. He keeps on moving his feet. He at no point really does he actually set. He kind of moves his feet, moves his feet. There's always he wants to be kind of moving. There's the theory of other base runners that they get to their spot and they set and they're like track stars and then they turn and go. He has a lot of movement with his feet. He wants to he wants that thing going towards second. Popped up. Carry out a play. All two strikes. Thirty steals for Hamilton. Three ahead of uh, Gordon and Turner. He got his 30th in the game here last night. Got the right guy back there to try to throw him out. It's Sucre. And a cut and a miss. Strike out of Jeanette. Coming up with a fastball. That's four strikeouts. I believe we got five, five for the other kid, Adelman. So these guys are throwing the ball well. That's a perfectly placed fastball right there. That was after all the lower changeups and fastballs that Scooter Jeanette saw, he could not catch up with that one at 93. Well, there's Joey Vado. Ramirez struck him out with a changeup the first time around. And Vado was not happy with himself. Runner goes, pitches down the throw. Is right into the runner, safe at second. Hamilton picks up his 31st stolen base. He got this one. Oh, the jump was ridiculous. The throw was outstanding, but the jump 
is what beat him. I mean, a great job by the big cat, Sucre, but he was already popping up when that ball was getting there because he walked into that steal. Just keep moving his feet, and then if he would have thrown over, he would have picked him off. Swings and misses. Change up. Well, what a pitch that can be, especially for this situation with a guy in scoring position. Somebody dearly wants to drive in that run at second base. Yeah, you don't, you, unless you really know the pitcher, you don't sit change up in this situation. Good job by him to do that right there. Even though you got the lefty in bottom, and I doubt seriously that Hamilton, the veteran, knowing that this is the best hitter on his team from the left side, is they got a chance getting thrown out at third base. But even wanting to keep him close to giving our outfielders a chance to maybe throw him out at home. Just a little low there. Two balls and a strike. I was talking earlier about how systematic Votto is, how intense of a hitter he is. He reminds me a little bit of a Will Clark back in the day, yeah, where he's a, that 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 intensity. Has an idea what he's trying to do every at bat. Studies well, has quick hands. He's having a little conversation with Supre. He's saying, you know, that's not the pitch you should have thrown to me right there. Actually, if I, you were pitching to me better, I will tell you. Let me tell you what pitch you should have thrown. But no, he's only, he's a, really a professor. Well, you see the intensity in his face. Yeah. It's business, all business. But back to the back. well with the changeup. Yep. He started him, got that and strike with the change, and now strike two with the changeup. And he's. He is. He went and he walked the ball over there to give it to the ball boy. He's something else. I tell you what. Might have been hurt a little bit on that swing. Hamilton walked, stole second, and that out on strikes, and a full count on Votto. You know what I love about him? That you were just we were talking about it during break. He, he, he makes $22 million a year. He's one of the higher paid major league players. He plays like he's making $22,000. Oh, close. Did he go? That's ball four. He came close to getting in there, but it's ball four. Votto takes a walk. Let's take another look. Because he made the call. Boy, he got right out there in that uh, let's talk about it territory. He, you know, and he holds look, it he back holds there. He holds it back there, and he's staring at Cuzzy, and he goes, "See, okay, maybe I, my, my veteran pulled yeah. that one off right there." That's from my good conversations I have with Phil every now and then when he's at first base. Joey Votto uh, treats him nice. Maybe he's brought him a present or two. I'm just saying. Adam Duvall now with two men on, a couple of walks in the inning. It's way wide, one and zero. Oh. Yeah, I, I looked that up. It's uh, talking about uh, Votto. He makes 22 million. The payroll is about 95. So he oh, makes 22 oh of the 95 God. million. Uh, that is the Cincinnati payroll. But I tell you what, all those young kids we're talking about, the youngest team in the major league, he plays just as hard, if not harder, than those kids. So that is something to behold because this guy is as intense as any of them trying to win. And as product, more productive than all of them. Jim Hickey spending some time out there on the mound, and uh, out comes Vic Carapazza, the plate umpire. Uh, here's where uh, Joey Votto ranks all time Oof. with uh, the Reds right now, and he's he's got a long way to go. But he reads up there with the Perez's at the benches. And yeah, but I mean time-wise. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, so, yeah, he's so those numbers are going to go up. That's the point of that comp. Right. I mean, his OPS is out the roof, and and the one that I'm kind of impressed with really is how he's kept his average 
so high throughout his whole career. The ball takes this one for a strike and the count is one and one. He was maligned a few years ago by the press and people over there because he kind of dripped a little bit in, in, in not an average but in RBIs. He got into the 80s for a little while. They're like, hey, we're paying you 20. So now last year, 97. This year, he's probably driving 120 the way he's going. Cutting a miss. But just a little movement at the end. A little Perfect. cutter. Little cutter. Such an important pitch for for these type of pitchers because it's again it's about movement, velocity, location, keeping the hitter off balance right now. Probably try to come in on him a little bit. Foul ball on the fastball up. Good spot. Maybe it needed it a little higher, but. Laboring a little bit this fourth inning right now with 20 pitches after really getting back to the old Erasmo ways the first three innings. First couple. Hamilton starts and stops and there's a swing and a miss. New ball. Chase that one a little late movement at the end again. I'll tell you what, you're going to see a Sucre set up beautifully down low, and, and Sucre's even talking to him. He goes, That's where you got to go. You got to come to me. And he went right to where Sucre, look at where Sucre is set up. And he's clapping Sucre, going, Okay, thanks. Because, and you know, there's a lot of confidence there, and he's trying to get him back to where this guy can pitch and how he pitches. So Sucre, maybe an important start right here between these two guys that communicate well. Mario Suarez up here now. Grounded to short his first time. Two outs with two men on. And off the plate. Ramirez trying to pitch around the walks. Two and zero. Oh. He didn't like that one. He wanted to be. He wanted to be closer with that pitch. And here's the difference, Dwayne. I mean, these are the times the guy, that in between type of pitcher or hitter or player, these are the moments that you just finished doing something beautiful. You got to get back and, and get back to your game right here. Get out of this inning. Foul ball. Two and one. Yeah, you think about how games are decided. They're not decided necessarily in the ninth inning, eighth inning. In situations like this can make a big difference in how the entire afternoon goes now. Hey, listen, let's be honest. I mean, we had a, a bases loaded middle of that first game. A team that's lost nine straight games. Uh, uh, Trevor Plouffe hits a single or a double, demoralizes this team. We'd be looking at a sweep right now, possibly. Foul ball takes the count to two and two. Well, a trip to the mound by Sucre. This is pretty good here. You know, he's worked him. He's worked himself to a situation where he's a he's within a pitcher getting out of this and holding on to the lead. And keeping his pitch count low too, so or in, in place after this long inning right now. And, Getting the support from the Red Kids. Two balls, two strikes. And he comes in off the plate. And the count is full. They'll be running. Start the runners here. Yep. With two outs and a full count. He wanted that one. He wanted that one. You see the framing right there? He missed it. Sucre tried to re, you know, tried to frame that one, but uh, Carpaza would have none of it. Three 
three two there they go and a ground ball to short charge Robertson has trouble now he's going to have Hamilton caught between third and home they send him down toward the plate Plouf trying to run him back and right there is Smith coming in from left field to put the tag on how about that Malik Smith finish that one off he gets the put out coming in from left field boy you don't want that rundown to go long with Hamilton he's hard to catch so he's so fast that it took the fastest guy on the race to catch the fastest guy Rays on the race. lead one nothing What a way to get out of it, getting Hamilton, who had rounded third after Robertson had bobbled that ground ball. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Loof up here to lead it off, 1 0. Oh. So, just to break that down, number one, an error charge to Robertson. Correct. That allowed Suarez to reach. Count and one to count. And then, quite a rundown to get. To get Hamilton between third and home. That play started with Robertson, then the Plouf, then Sucre got involved. There's a fly ball back into deep left. Duval's going to go back, and that baby is gone. Plouf hits one out, and the Rays get another run. Well, the Rays got Plouf with the idea that he might add some pop against lefties. He homers against the right-hander here. His first home run in a Rays uniform. Picked up a hit in the seventh inning last night. Played first base last night, third base today. And he hits the home run. That's his eighth of the year in his first in a Rays uniform. Outstanding. You know what he's probably most appreciative other than the Rays coming and signing him? Is that manager Cash has given him three consecutive starts? He's given him some ABs, get right back into baseball at, at the big league level, and get out there. Not just with lefties, Dwayne. It's been with two righties, and he, uh, you know, we know he can play third base, and he can also pop it. That was a beautiful swing. Well, there goes the bat. Look out! Right back into the screen. Let's take a look at the uh, Plouf home run. Now two seamer kind of hung right over the inner third. He had to get those hands through. That was beautiful. See that bottom hand like pull through his chest to be ordered to get the uh, the head of the bat. And then of course the perfunctory Susan Jr. hug when you hit a home run. Who doesn't want that? I want that just in general in my life. <laughs> 
This is a junior hug. One ball, two strikes. One of those other guys that's like a good teammate. It seems like Trevor Poole. So I was talking to him a little bit yesterday. He's really happy to be here. And uh, appreciative. Two and two. And one of the things he said when he came over here, he, he, he's always intrigued by this team. Right. <laughs> kind of interesting. I think a lot of people are. Yeah. We're, we're intrigued. We, we are. Much of the time. Yeah. A little foul ball to Robertson still up there 2 2. We see it day to day, and, and over the last several years, there's been a lot of, you know, really, when you break it down, there's been a lot of success. Yep. But. It's also been a lot of fun. It's also been a lot of dynamic and interesting characters. Obviously, Joe Madden set something in place a few years ago that has carried over. Now it's Kevin Cash carrying the, the torch. And, and I really think this third year for Cash is, is, is establishing the new persona, the new kind of image. And it's and it's good, hard playing baseball. It's Robertson. It's ball four. Well. And in that way, we talked about him the other night being sort of a, a throwback type player, and, and it's really great to see that. You know, there's some athleticism, some skill that he gives you on the infield, and and he battles up there at the plate as well. You've seen the, some strength there. He's got some power. Yes, he does. Now Taylor Featherston with a man at first and nobody out. He's got a run in the third, another run in the fourth on the home run by Plouffe. What else they can build here in the fourth inning. Runners on his way to second and the pitch foul back. The Rays with a couple of runs lead being aggressive here. Yeah we were just talking about the other day that you don't see as much hit and run as we used to in yesteryear. Now all of a sudden perfect and dynamic. I mean Robertson's not a super speed or speedy guy but he runs the base as well. And you've got a guy that hits the ball you know the ground a lot. And Featherston and hits behind the runner. That's exactly what that was. That was a hit and run. And this pitch foul back. That got a good amount of the plate. And it's 0 2. Ray's got out of a spot at the top of the inning. Come back and immediately scored a run on the third pitch of the inning. Blue hitting a home run into the seats and left. It's foul the other way. They got out of that inning, and again, the, the actual scoring on that rundown went from Robertson to Plouffe, then to Sucre. Featherston got involved, then Plouffe again. And finally, Malik Smith. So six five two. We got six five two four five seven. How about five, that for a rundown? Six five two four five seven. Yeah, the Rays tried to surround him. It, 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 oh yeah, it, it, it was, it was definitely. It, yeah, it was a corral <laughs> kind of situation. And then it took Malik Smith like. Let's give it to our fast guy. Yeah. To that, get their you know, fast guy. That actually is a great idea. <laughs> let's give it to him and you, let's see who you run. Yeah. You catch you him. Tag him. <laughs> they were not being able to catch <laughs> Billy Hamilton. Swing and a miss. Featherston out of there. Can you imagine Billy Hamilton when he was a kid and they, they played that game? Like, oh, you know. Yeah. You know. He'd get out every time. He, 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 he would just get. Well, let's take another look at that rundown. Great. Here it is right here ground ball and he butchers it right there but he keeps it in front of him that was the key and then he didn't throw it to first so then he's going to go to Ploof. Ploof's realized that I can't catch him. Sucre say I can't catch him. And then and then Malik says let me get him. Yeah. I got him. You see Malik's running Run in from all left. the way from left field. Because you going. need some speed in this <laughs> run down and I'm on my way. Gorgeous out in front a change up and missed it strike one. Great job by uh, by Malik to to come on in. There was no other place for him to be, so why not back up the play? And uh, one speedster ca one speedster catching the other one. I tell you, if they stay in the big leagues for a long time, and I think they both could. 
Alex might be the only one out of the two that could say, hey, I tagged you out, buddy, in the game. <laughs> you haven't gotten me. You're in center field. The chances of you tagging me out are pretty nil. Hot shot up the left side. Going to be a foul ball. Not by much. Oh, that ball hot off the bat, but foul. The two strike count. Raised out two runs, three hits. Robertson back at first. Well, Sucre's on deck, and the real key for him to be successful is the other guy in second. Yeah. Put him in scoring position. Oh, he's been incredible. <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. 0 2 now on Peter Borges. First, back in over there, Robertson. Two pitchers have been quite similar, almost to a T as far as pitch counts and balls and strikes, strikeouts, except the only difference is that the Rays have been able to take away a couple of runs. Ground ball headed to short. Peraza will have to go to first. Close, safe at first base. Beating down that line out of the batter's box, Peter Borges beats the play. Slowly hit. Well, and there's an infield hit. That's the old school Peter Borges right there. One of the reasons he made it to the big leagues is because he had world class speed. And honestly, that's one thing that they're going to be missing with Cozart at short. He's got a rocket of an arm. Peraza doesn't. Raz is more of a second baseman type arm, and uh, you saw it right there. Big chance for our boy, yeah, Mr. Risp. Well, they did manage to get Robertson into scoring position. Very, very Borges risky here, and you can see with men in scoring position this year, hitting 393. How about that. After the first one, sends it back into center. That ball carries on Hamilton just a step or two in front of the track. And the runners are going to wind up still at first and second. That ball continued to carry on Hamilton. And I I wonder Robertson's thinking, oh, yeah, he should have been at third. He got the off the bat. I think everybody thought it was a can of court fly ball. So he went a third of the way. And then the ball just get drifted and drifted. There, see, he's thinking, okay, it's a can of corn. He's reading almost the outfielder. And then when he realizes it, it's almost warning track. And at that point, it was too late for him to tag. But he's going, oh, my, wait a second. This was going pretty far. By then, it was too late. He should be on third base, Dwayne, but. Here's a base hit by Smith. Sharply hit into right. Robertson digs for the plate. He will score standing over to third, goes Borges. Malik Smith took care of that situation, driving in the run to make it three to nothing. And he didn't waste any time. A hard headline drive in the right field to pick up this extra run. Well, that was the reason why we keyed on him, he had an 11 game industry coming in. Now he's actually added a second knock on this changeup right here. One of the things I've really been pleased with the second go round of the Malik Smith and with the Rays is that. He's really swinging the bat well. Even the, the fundamental, this isn't the punch and Judy swing. This is a nice, level, good swing. He's hitting the ball with authority to the opposite field. He's impressing me offensively in something I didn't realize that he had, which is a quality major league swing. Now Corey Dickerson pops it up. Foul ball headed back and out of play. Strike one. That has a whole different dynamic. I mean, when you're talking about the two guys, Hamilton and and, and the kid, Malik Smith, right now, Malik Smith looks to have the better acumen, better swing at the plate. Yes, it's Hamilton with all the stolen bases and tenure at the big leagues, but it'll be interesting how, how this all works out in the coming years. And of course, they throw over to first, try to keep him safe. Got speed. On the corners for the Rays. Love it, love to hear that. And Dickerson up here with a chance to 
assess further damage. The Rays with a run in the third and now two runs in the fourth inning. Just a little bit of that one. Fighting in. And no throw. So Smith picks up a stolen base there. Take a look at the lead. Huge lead, and nobody's covering. So they were going to defend Dickerson, not Malik Smith. Nine steals for Dickerson uh, for Smith. Now Dickerson with men in second and third. And the count goes to 2 2 to the Rays designated hitter. So there he's going down to the choke up that, that we talked about yesterday and I talked to him last night. He just it depends how he feels on a particular pitcher and right now he's trying to not chase a ball. So he said oh I'm choking up to try to make sure that I can reach if I could reach it I got it and he is out on strikes on a breaking ball so the Rays are finished in the fourth but it's a productive inning home run by Trevor Plouffe to open it and an RBI single by Malik Smith makes it a three nothing ball game. Trevor Plouffe belting a home run to open the bottom of the fourth. We go to the fifth. Scott Shebler is going to lead off. Shebler, as Rocco and Winker do, against the Rays right-hander Erasmo Ramirez. Lifted back into left center field. Gorgeous will go to the track, and that ball is gone. Shebler toward the center field side of left center. That's a pretty good shot to get it out. What? That's his it. 20th home run of the year. To hit the ball that far from the left side, you've got to be a beast because that's where a right-hander guy hits it and pulls it to left center. But I told you, I love this guy's swing. He coils and then uncoils, and he just explodes on it. Watch this right here. Whoa! It's a whip of a swing. And now here's this pitch. Popped into left. Zarocco put a big swing on that fastball. Got under it enough, and Smith makes the catch out there. 
Shevler the home run to get Cincinnati on the board. It's now three to one. Another look at that one. Oh, just kept going, Dwayne. Just kept going and going and going. And... These guys have some power. Even even Miserac oh just missed that one yes, right he there. Did. Winker. And I really like this kid's swing. I was paying attention to him down there yesterday when when I was down in the in purgatory. I mean in the well down there. And uh no, it was fun to be down there and watch some of these kids. They got some really exciting swinging youngsters. Fly ball center and Winker is out of there on the fastball. Two gone now. Hey, let's check in with Rich, see how he's doing. What do you got, Rich? Thanks, Dwayne. A couple of guys on the race conspicuous by their absence. Evan Longoria and Colby Rasmus, both not in the lineup today. But the news is not bad. Kevin Cash earlier this morning saying that Longo's foot is fine. He's just getting a scheduled day off. And Rasmus is a little bothered by that hip that he had surgery on in the offseason. He's missed the last three games. Longo has missed three games now all year long. And both of them are two of the best runners in scoring position hitters on this team so far today, Dwayne. Not too bad without those two guys. The Rays are two for five with runners in scoring position. Yeah, it's nice to have some depth. And then the Rays out in front here in the fifth inning. The trick is don't stop scoring. Yeah, right. You get the when lead. You get the let's guys. get another run. Yeah. Let's get a couple more here. Sure, sure. Add on. Five ball center field. Gorgeous will go back. With plenty of room to make the catch. A run on the home run, and that's it. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's three to one, Tampa Bay. Field the fourth Saturday when the Rays take on the Orioles and the first 15,000 fans take home a Kevin Kiermaier Star Wars bobblehead presented by Tech Data. So be a part of the action. Visit RaysBaseball.com today. That is a cool bobblehead. I want that one. Simon Susan Jr. takes the pitch. One ball, no strikes. Morrison to follow and then Plouffe. The miss. Big swing right there on the fastball. Well, here's our uh, our big representatives of the big swing club, like the Reds guys, is Dickerson and definitely Souza leading off this inning. Hi. Fly ball down the left side, back toward that low wall, and that's going to be off the wall to the left of Duval. Souza will 
around second and stopped there. That was a towering fly ball toward the line. And Duvall could not quite situate himself on that one off the wall. That'll go for two bases. That went sky high. He just missed hitting that 9,000 feet. He goes, wait a second, this is going to be fair. It initially off the bat, it looked like it was definitely going to be foul. But it came back in, and then Duval just doesn't know where it is. And he's at first base going, oh, whoa, whoa, hey, I almost missed that. Well, you know, Sousa hit that ball the other night that hit the C ring, and I think uh, They're Kevin Cash him. is wondering about that one. It was so high. They're going to take a big You saw it. Duvall kind of struggle with uh, following that one. And I think Kevin's going to get them to take a look at it. Problem is, you get that high, it's difficult to really discern. What's going on? You well, know, what and Sousa right now is you know what you know what he's talking about right now. Yeah, he's talking about the ball that hit the roof. Oh. He, he's he's telling Jeanette, yeah, I hit a ball the other night. <laughs> hit the roof here. <laughs> hit the roof forget there. forget about it. And I got the a rings. triple out of it. Yeah, it like <laughs> hit the roof. So we'll, we'll show you what we can show you. And uh, let's see, way up. I don't think that. Yeah, you know, following to see if there was a trajectory kind of offset. It, it just came down. So I don't think it. I think I was just misplayed and lost up there. He definitely hit the roof the other day, and I don't know how he didn't get a home run for that. Hey, you know, here's a here's a question. You know, they tracked the uh, the home run that uh, was hit last night by Sucre. You know, it was like 38 feet. Yeah, you know, it top, topped out right. at 38 feet. Well, why can't they track every other ball that's hit anywhere else in the building? That's a good point. Just we're, thinking. We're 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 challenging Big Brother. I don't know if you. I don't want to be. We want to start asking those type of questions. <laughs> you may turn up, you know, missing someday or something. These are kind of delicate questions. Stats, you know, they 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 know what they're doing supposedly. <laughs> well, I guess you're safe. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, I'm not even worried about that. I'm not going to 38 feet and how many spin times the ball spin rate. I... Now a turn and a throw back to second. They picked him off. Suja Jr. picked off second. Hallian on the call. Tom Hallian makes important calls, and this is an important one right here. Sousa headed back toward the dugout. They got him. He got caught leading. There's the tag. He went even close to the bag. And the Rays, that's a big base runner to lose, a leadoff double. Morgan Morrison takes the pitch upstairs, 1-0. I don't, well, think he, I don't think he realized that the shortstop was creeping on him behind him as he was taking his lead. He he just didn't look behind him. Two and yeah, oh. you're gonna you're gonna see it right here. The shortstop's creeping. He's paying attention to the pitcher. He's looking around. Okay, seconds over there. I'm good, and I'm gonna take my. I'm pretty good. And shortstop came from center field angle and kind of like sabotaged him a little bit. Great job by Peraza right there. That was really more on him than the pitcher. Having a great move. He just threw to through the second. One away, base is empty. Well, it's one of those things you're not happy with yourself, but you gotta just get past it. You do in the just, moment. You, you that was a blind side, literally. He didn't look all the way around. Which wound up moving in on him, and it's fouled out of play. Two balls, two strikes.
Adelman's pretty much like on the verge here where he's hanging in there, Dwayne, but the Rays could, you know, just barrage him here in a moment with their power that they have. Fly ball, not too deep to center. Hamilton coming straight in to make this catch. Well, here's the thing. Third time through, so yeah, exactly. they have a chance now to have seen him a couple of at bats, and that makes a difference. Now Trevor Flew. One of the fun things about this season has been how just dynamic our offense has been, especially slugging wise and power wise and scoring runs wise. Homered in the fourth inning. One for two. Been there against the right hander today. He has a, a 270 average in his career against left handed pitching. Yep. And as we saw, even against a right hander here, had some pop over 100 career home runs for him. And that's a big part of what the Rays are hoping they can get from Blue. That would be a major addition. Foully off speed pitch there. Steady at third base, can spot at first base. Obviously, DH. And he's another guy who he does tend to hit the ball in the air. Yes, he does. And Rays don't mind those guys. No, they, know, they, they look. They talk about trying to get a lift and take advantage of that. And you know, again, he's, I think, an older version of Daniel Robinson. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a guy that they were looking for good teammate, hard playing, can play multiple positions. Got some pop and and is a professional. Full count. I wanted to ask you how much you think this team might remind you of the 08 team that that did go to the World Series. I think that, I mean there's some similarities as far as the potential of. Youth meets yep. veteran. You know, I, I think on, on just first thought, that team was more athletic, although this team is more athletic than we've seen the last couple of years. I agree. Which was a great move uh, in the right direction. I think this club has a chance to be maybe more balanced the way they're trying to construct it. And that's what we talked about the other night. Yeah. If, if they get a couple of arms to settle in between. The starter and, and the closer. Yes. And if they can make plays, they're supposed to make. That's pretty big. Yeah, they're definitely over 50 errors this year. It's, uh, and you know, tricky. you're right. Here's the thing about uh, Robertson. He's played nicely in second. He's played short. You don't have to have a guy who's spectacular. Right. You just make the plays you're supposed to make. Yeah. Start a double play. Make sure you get a double play. Those those kinds of things. And if you get guys like that, you, know, you give yourself a chance to win. I think so, especially with the pop that they have. Um, that 08 team was a very, very good defense team. I think yep. they got better the following years. Like by 10, 11, they were even better defensively. But I remember that 08 team being just a really solid baseball team with some, a couple of good starters, and then just they could bop you. They could, they could hang with you. They were resilient. Foul. One ball, two strikes. Great bullpen. That that was a big thing for them. Especially Boy, when that's they got, so important. They had, they had a super bullpen that they called up a young David Price to, to shore that up even in the playoffs. Yep. So, uh, it was, it was you know, they had some team. guys down there who had been in those situations before, who had been to the postseason. Sure. But I think you need to you, you need to mix in those veterans. I remember. You know, we had some problems back in last year, 12, with some injuries, and we just weren't deep. We weren't deep enough. Now, all of a sudden, I like the depth of this of this team. Who 
Loop back in at first. You're on a two out walk. Well, the third time through, three of the five men to face him have reached base. Third time through. That is different. It's a proper foul out of play. Especially the smart hitters at the major league level will remember what's going on, what he's trying to do. And it becomes a basically a boxing match as, as you get into the round and round and round and now you're looking for that punch. There's a liner base hit into center field. Luke makes the turn. He's going to go to third. The throw headed to third. That is in time. Luke cut down. Hamilton throws him out. That's the seventh assist for Hamilton this year. As the Rays trying to take advantage of him out there. And on the base hit by Robertson, Luke is cut down at third. Now the Rays lose a couple base runners in that inning and do not score. Picking up two hits and a walk in the four hitters who came to the plate. We are through five. Three one Tampa Bay. Driven by GMC. Three to one, the Rays lead this game. Had some opportunities and could not get out of their own way in the bottom of the fifth. Now we go to the sixth. And here's Billy Hamilton who got the assist. And that led to the third out at the bottom of the fifth. Strike one. Wait, that last inning was like my son Armando's honors math class. What hard to figure? Exactly, <laughs> because and I, I stopped I stopped uh, helping him out a while back. But you had four men reach. Here's a throw from Billy Hamilton, who, by the way, does have seven assists. He's kind of sneaky with that arm. It's not powerful, but he's, he, it's it's on point. You have. Kind of the math equation would be you have four guys come up to the plate, three reach, but you don't score. How can that happen? <laughs> yeah, and, and really the question is what's the probability of you not scoring? Right. You know, calculate that. I'm sure somebody's doing that right now. I, oh, wait, yes, yeah, again, especially in our organization of the Rays, I'm sure they already figured it out. It's saver metrics, but uh, I. I guess you get picked off at second, you get thrown out at third to end an inning. There's two outs right there, and you're done. Strike three called on Hamilton. Great pitch right here. You were talking earlier about the little cutter, the little wrinkle pitch. He's used it on the outside corner with the righties. Right there, he used it on the outside corner with the lefties. Great pitch. Picks up his sixth strikeout. 
And to this point, this is exactly the kind of outing the Rays had hoped to get from Ramirez. Turn his little stretch around here. Yes, sir. To that with a base hit into center field. Make the turn and hang on there. Borges returns the ball to the infield, and Jeanette has his first hit. The second hit surrendered by Ramirez today. The Rays are going to get some action in the bullpen. The former Cincinnati Red, Jumbo Diaz, has started to loosen. And he is joined by Alvarado, a hard throwing left hand. Well, Dwight, you were talking about third time through with Adelman. Yeah, we're getting to the meat of the order, and it's going to be third time through with our boy Erasmo. Yeah, that was a strike to Votto, and yeah, that's why we talked about getting around here and there, adding on, yes, adding on, and uh, action in the Reds bullpen. And so that's why you have an opportunity to lead off double, and then. Despite the fact that you lose that runner, you're going to walk and a base hit, and you still don't score. So it's difficult. Now you've got one on, one out, and the middle part of the order coming up for the Reds. Austin Price throwing in the bullpen for Cincinnati now. Goal on the count, Duvado. One and one. The infield for Votto. Oh. Strike at the knees. One and two. Good pitch right there. This is arguably the most important hitter for Erasmo in today's game. And you've got the outstanding all star Joey Votto and only a two run lead in Venom first. Two and two. Five to the fastball. Well, the Rays starting the day in third place in the American League East, three and a half behind Boston now. Red Sox a half game up on the Yankees. The Yankees have dropped seven in a row. Way wide, full count. He's working him. Raspo, he's making him. I tell you, he is working this count right here with this hitter because he knows how dangerous he can be. Wait, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Maybe try to get that backdoor cutter right here that he got Hamilton with. 3 2. And that is ball four as the runner broke. Sucre made the throw down to second base. He did come in with that pitch. Yes, he sure did. That was it right there. And he wanted that one. And so did Sucre. Sucre thought he had it. But uh, Mr. Votto has been one of the best eyes in all of baseball for the last several years. His eyes were on point. And that's what it was. Vic Carapaz saw it also. He said, nope. So that's walk, and that's going to be it. Ah. For Rasmo Ramirez, Kevin Cash comes out to make the pitching change. Two men on, one out, back in a moment.
Rays holding on to a 3 1 lead with one out, and our boy Erasmo was giving way to former Red Jumbo Diaz. But Erasmo, I'll tell you what, had a pretty solid day. Uh, he was looking to find some redemption at home, and he found it. He's pitched well at home. He's 3 0, 3 2 9 ERA. And you know what? He had the good little cutter, had the changeup in place, can mix in the fastball, had five strikeouts. There's the changeup. There's the high fastball. There's the cutter. And uh, I like what I saw. He needed this game, Wade. He needed this. Let me come back home. Let me get a free swinging team. Let me hit my spots. Probably wanted to at least go through six. And, but you know what? Give way right here to Jumbo and see if he can get himself a ground ball double play. Jumbo Diaz, the former Cincinnati Red. And here and he will face Adam Duvall. Jeanette at second, Votto at first. And a cut to miss on the slider. Well, you're going to get high octane and the fastball and the slider. 97 and a very nasty, dramatic slider that he throws around 90 to 91. So, yeah, expect hard and harder. It's about his control right now and how, how well he keeps that ball down. Ball one strike. You know, and I feel for Jumbo a little bit this year because uh, he had a baby right around spring training and it had some complications. So you know, there's a lot of things that people don't know that goes on in, a, in the daily life of a ball player and trying to fight through what his job is, which is be ready to pitch and, and get major league hitters out. But thankfully, the baby's doing a lot better, and, and so is Jumbo. Foul right back into the screen. It's one and two. With three scoreless appearances since returning to the 25 man roster. And up in a big spot here in this game. Rays lead by two. Two men on. One out, top of the sixth. Two strikes. I saw Diaz for an inning and a third Saturday in the Detroit series. Gave up a hit and a walk and two strikeouts, no runs. He's in relief of Chris Archer. In that game, he turned out to be the bridge yeah. between the starter and the closer. Colome worked the final inning in two thirds. Picked up his 19th save. Archer got the win. So he's in here in the sixth inning. The Rays up three to one. And a full count on this hitter, Duvall. Suarez on deck. Big jumbo number 70 firing it. He was going. 142 games. They used the heck out of him one year. Up in the 70s, he was kind of like Joel Peralta was over here for a while. Rubber arm. See another 3 2 pitch from Diaz. And he got it. Slider got it. And that is out number two. Big strikeout there. Big, big strikeout. That's a dangerous hitter in Duval. And you know what? He finally got on top good with that slider properly. That's the good one. He was spiking the other ones. Fastball looked really nice so far, but he had really gotten a good feel for the slider and that at bat. That that hitter, and he finally did. But he has that one along with the 97, Dwayne. He's he's wicked. 
Jesus Suarez, the third baseman. 98 with the fastball to start him too high. 1 0. Ground balls to short in this game. Ball on strike. Erasmo Ramirez out of the game, leaving two men on. Work five and a third, 88 pitches. And now the game in the hands of Jumbo Diaz. Spider missing. Two balls and a strike. There's his boy right there, Jim Raswell. One of the OEAs going, okay, I'm waiting. Boy right here trying to. Hook us up. Get that last out of this inning. Yeah, he That's a strike. And it's two and two. Jumbo's feeling it right now. Yeah, he's feeling it right now. He got that slider back. First few pitches to the ball were mostly fastball and kind of spiking the slider. Now this is a tight slider. That's a major league slider to a right-handed hitter. He has no chance. To hit that pitch. Big pitch 2 2 right here. And it's foul back, came with a fastball. Reds left a couple of men on in the fourth inning, lost a base runner in the rundown. He got a run on a home run. Shepler, who's on deck, that came in the fifth. Two men on now with two outs and a 2 2 count. And it's going to go full. And Jumbo knows that this is his guy. These two hitters, the ball and Eugenio, were the ones that he needed to go after because the lefty's going to face. Jose Alvarado if it gets to that point and Jumbo does not want it to get to that point. he wants to go get his guy and he went 3 2 to Duvall and got him on the slider now he's 3 2 to Suarez and all four he lost him with the slider bases will be loaded. Down to first, Suarez, Vado to second. Jeanette down to third. And Scott Shubler will be the hitter. And we're going to see the move made here. It's going to be Alvarado in the matchup against the lefty. We'll be back in a moment.
Next on, brought to you by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. By GMC, we are professional grade. And by Jeep, get great deals at the Jeep Spring Clearance event. Rays hold his three to one lead. Cincinnati with the bases loaded, two outs in the sixth. And Jose Alvarado will be the third Rays pitcher in the inning. Ramirez started this inning. It's five and a third total today. Diaz and now Alvarado. Young kid, the rookie. See right there, he's only two with the five two nine year array. But you know, every now and then he just looks like lights out. He look, sometimes he comes in and he's looking like a uh, Geraldus Chapman. That's what we're needing right now because he's uh, pretty much that hard fastball most of the time. The two seamer is electric. It's like a snake. 98, 99 miles an hour touches 100 at, occasionally. Alvarado has his work cut out for him. He'll face Scott Shebler. Who's hitting 313 against left handers this year. Five of his 20 home runs have come against lefties. So a big spot for the young lefty. And then the pitch is a strike. Shebler homered to left center off Ramirez in the fifth inning. It's a very compact swing. And he is one of these guys that just hunts pitches. Strike. Breaking pitch there. Bellinger, as we mentioned earlier today, 22 home runs in the National League. Votto and Shebler each have 20. And you think, I tell you, Shebler's probably picked up as, as a younger player a lot from Joey Votto as far as how he hunts at and thinks up at the plate. That's one and two. Two really good sliders. Again. Yeah, two good sliders that he's featured early in the count on Shebler. He's got him thinking now. He's got it now where it could be slider or that fastball. He hasn't really seen how nasty a fastball that Jose Alvarado can throw. So there's no doubt that right now, advantage Jose. Two. Ground ball deflected off his glove. The ball rolling toward the foul line. The run's going to score. That makes it a three to two ball game. He threw him the fastball. Shebler hit it hard back to the mound. It was deflected by Alvarado and he lost his glove. Sure did. I mean, he got the fastball. I think he wanted that fastball to be a little higher, and Shebler stayed. On it. I tell you, I don't know if Robertson gets to that ball. He might have. He was shading up the middle. Yeah, Robertson would have had that ball all day long. How about that? Off the bat, you're thinking, I'll base it up the middle, but unfortunately, he can't help but react, Dwayne, because he's right there and he's thinking, I can maybe try to make a dramatic catch. Instead, he deflects it, base hit. 3 2. Now it's a 3 2 ball game, and here's Mezzarocco. Swinging through that fastball at 99. The run charge to Ramirez. Devin Mezzarocco, the catcher. He has power. Is fouled another fastball up in the zone and up in velocity. Austin Pruitt also up in the bullpen for the Rays. Stop the bleeding right here. Keep this game a one run game. I'd like to see that fastball. He's going to throw it up, throw it a little higher. Two. 
picked that one up and in on it. Little break there. That's the thing that Jose is still trying to iron out. I think he will in the coming seasons where if he, he'll really be fine tuned as to where he wants these nasty pitches to go. When he gets that, he's going to be a hammer reliever or maybe even a closer. Two strike pitch again. End of the dirt. That got. This is Sucre with a phenomenal block right there on that slider. And he, I think he got him on the wrist, maybe. Got him all over. Yeah, that's par for the course for a catcher. Yeah. They take a beating back there. Make that pitch right now. One, two. Spot that fastball where you want it. And he got him. He stayed with the slider. Sure did. And strikes him out. One run. Cincinnati leaves the bases loaded. And the Rays come in to hit in the bottom of the six, leading three to two. Paul Ramirez against Tim Adelman and the Rays open the scoring with Steven Souza Jr. Single to left. That got Aju Sucre home in the third. Remember Plouffe opened the bottom of the fourth with a home run before the inning was over. Malik Smith delivered an RBI single, a liner into right. That made it 3 nothing. But the Reds came back on a home run by Scott Schepler, his 20th of the year. That opened the fifth, and in the sixth inning, this hit deflection off the glove of Jose Alvarado scored a run, making it three to two before they got the final out on the strikeout of Mazzarocco. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and Austin Bryce is the new pitcher. Five innings for Adelman, and the Rays now face Bryce with Taylor Featherston leading off, and the first pitch is a fastball wide, one and zero. Oh. 14 games for Bryce, a uh, youngster. Only 23 in the third innings. And uh, you see right there that he's helped. Opponents a 205 average. So get, get a little taste of the big league's got some good bullpen youngsters coming out of the Reds. Uh, staff over there, been impressed with their kids. Ground ball headed toward the middle glove by Peraza and cannot get a clean throw away. Featherston has a base hit. 
I don't think there was much of a play unless you've got a rocket of an arm and Peraza does not he what he does have is great range and he gets to this ball but at that point he almost needs to eat it because he wasn't even really set well that's why he makes the quick toss because he knows his arm isn't strong enough to to make the dramatic play but he figured he'd give it a go. Well let's see if the Rays can do something with this they really missed and messed up an opportunity to score in the fifth. Here's Peter Borges. And no pitch time granted another late granting of time. Handelman worked five innings gave up seven hits. Three runs all earned he walked. Four. Borges. A lot of action in the bullpen over there, Lorenzo. Strike on the outside corner. One on, nobody out. That's uh, Peralta moving up the lefty. Tapper foul on two. 95 pitches for the Cincinnati starter. Seven strikeouts to go with the four walks. Now Bryce with a two strike count on Peter Borges. Job by Ad, you know, Adelman hung in there. Four walks kind of beat him up a little bit. Scattered those seven hits, and he was pretty good with seven strikeouts and only five complete. Two and two. Bryce out of Pittsburgh, North Carolina. He was actually born in Hong Kong. Yeah, how about that? Carolina. Oh yeah, no, no, not Hong Kong, North Carolina. Which yeah, yeah, you can get a good hot dog over there. But uh, this is the real Hong Kong, China. We have a full count. And open with a base hit. Sucre on deck. We're just all the way out to three and two. Let's see if our boy Featherston will be running on this pitch. He is, and the pitch is popped up, foul, and will be out of play. I like that. I like getting him in motion right there. You're hoping that not going to get a strike out here, but you're probably going to get a ball in play by. Peter Borges. You don't have Barnhart back there, who's probably the better thrower of the two catchers. Though so Devin, not exactly, you know, cheapy out there too. And Azaraco's got a good rifle of an arm. Runner goes, 3-2, chop to third. Tough play, Suarez, long throw. Safe there as he came off the bag, and Featherston is going to be out at third. Trying to go to third. On that chop and the throw across, 
And so Featherston is caught being overly aggressive there and another big mistake by the Rays. And that's three in the last two innings. When you've got situations that you do not cardinal rules. You don't get thrown out at third to end an inning which we had last inning and you don't really try to challenge that situation there. He thought he'd be sneaky and try to surprise more so the third baseman who, who stepped back to try to make that play. Not so much Joey Votto. He was trying to think to sneak up on the third baseman and Eugenio Suarez was calmly reading the play and he was ready for the throw. Moore just gets a base hit. Featherston caught trying to go to third. Well, you think about uh, the last couple innings here. The Rays, the Rays have put five of their last six hitters on base and have nothing to show for. The mathematics is getting even more. Speaking of Hong Kong, China, it's getting more like not Chinese math right now. It's astronomical how they have not scored. So Gray with a base hit into center field. Gorgeous makes the turn and holds at second base. First and second with one out. And you know that it's the little intricacies of baseball of thinking ahead. Here's uh, Sucre with a beautiful base hit up the middle. And we're going to have a pitching change. But you think ahead, you remember, you remind yourself, I've got a great guy who drives in a lot of runs, and I get thrown out. Well, pitching change coming back in a moment. Scherzer had a no hitter going and with one out in the eighth inning AJ Ellis hits this one off sure glove and that's going to go as a hit Scherzer got his mitt on it and so the no hit bid comes to an end after seven and a third innings. Wow here the Rays the last time through the order nine men have been up. Starting with Malik Smith, whose base hit drove in a run, but then he was left on base. So seven of the last nine men have reached base for the Rays, and they have not scored a run out of any of those runners reaching base. And now a pitching change gets the left-hander Wandy Peralta in here. Yeah, another nasty uh, reliever for the Cincinnati Reds. Wandy Wandy Peralta coming in to face the left-handed Malik Smith. Pitch is a ball, so the Rays with one out, Borges at second, Sucre at first. Leaves away, and that darts over a slider, one and one. Wanting more of your 
kind of typical lefty specialist. He's got really good breaking pitches. The check swing, foul ball on the same pitch. 0 2. Maddox, two hits today. Rays with 10 hits in the game. Pops it into a couple of steps into the outfield. A little popper there. And on the infield pop, Alex Smith is the second out. Jeanette handles formality. And here is Corey Dickerson. So two outs with two men on. Dickerson has walked, line to right, struck out swinging. Now facing the left hander. Fastball. Went high octane from Peralta. 98 off the plate end. Big at bat right here for both teams. You got 3 2. You got a close game. But this is a dangerous hitter that can open it up dramatically. There's a strike. One and one. Now the Reds dealing the bullpen cards with the hard throwing left hander Peralta in here. And a little looper in the short center field base hit. Here comes Borges in to score. And Dickerson comes through to give the Rays a run. And their lead is up to two. Four two ball game now. Big to get that run back right there to get the answer back, get a little breathing room. And that's one thing that Dickerson has been able to do. You get a hard four seamer, and he'll battle it right there. In fact, the top hand kind of sl slips off the bat, but keeps the bottom hand on there and punches that ball over the shortstop. Great, great at bat right there to just battle some nasty four seamer. Peralta getting a visit. From Max Jenkins. Get in on the action with exclusive on field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. Host a group of 50 to 85 in that private party area. Just stepped from the raised bullpen. Reserve the Papa John's bullpen box by calling group sales at 888 Fan Rays or emailing group sales at RaysBaseball.com. Limited dates remain. Steven Susie Jr. Two for three today. He drove in a run with a base hit in the third. Double to open the fifth and was picked off. So he's up against the hard throwing left hander. Souza making his first career start in the number three spot. He's been in that number three slot before. There's a base hit punched into center field. Sucre on his way to the plate. Suta not wasting any time. And the Rays put another run on the board. And they're up five to two. So there's that three run lead again. Love it. Suta driving in his second run. And you know that nobody wanted to come through more than Suza right there after being picked off in the fifth. And yeah. He jumps on the first pitch. He sure did. Dickerson had a four seam fastball that he kind of jammed out into center field. Souza gets a two seam fastball. There's no jamming about it. He went on top and hunted for that pitch. Was looking first pitch fastball and he hit, he squared that one up. Morgan Morrison takes the pitch down one and oh. So a three hit day for Souza in his first career start as a number three hitter. He's been in six games hitting third as a Non starter. He's at first, Dickerson's at second. Morrison lifts it foul out of play.
Rays now have 12 hits today. One point led three to nothing. And three two and now with this uprising here in this inning. A couple of runs and it's five two. A ball two strikes. Runs charged to Bryce in a third of an inning. He gave up three hits. Ooh, Morrison reaching just got a little piece of that and stays alive. Sure did. He just barely he knows it. He's like, what am I doing swinging at that? But it was lucky that he was able to tip it. And stay alive, but this lefty's a, a tricky matchup for him. There's a nice tight slider right there. There's not much you can do with that pitch except just try to follow it off. And the shot back into right center field. That's got some carry and will go one hop to the wall. Dickerson has scored. Souza races across the plate on the double by Morrison. A big hit for Logan Morrison to give him 51 runs batted in. And the Rays have opened a five run lead. I tell you what, pay attention to me, All Star game. I'm here enough for real. There's another slider, and I think he sat on that one. He sat on that slider. He got it up. He might have thought he got a big fly, too. He might have thought he got it a little more than he did, but he got enough. Right there to drive in two. Huge hit. Now that's going to be it for Peralta. 13th double for Morrison. The Rays have put five up on the board here in the sixth. Back in a moment. What's coming up Friday? Rays live, the pregame show presented by Gulf Coast Honda Dealers. Special demo day telecast. Players demonstrating, and arrest is in Doug breaking down the fundamentals of the game. That'll be uh, a great teaching moment. And It'll a, be and outstanding. A we we had a fun time with that the last last year. We did that a couple of times, and uh, you know it's really fun to be able to pull that off. It's something totally. Off the beaten path to be, to be able to mix in a telecast and uh, Doug, and, Doug and the crew did a great job. Restoring the new pitcher. Remember Ploof up here. 31st appearance for Storin. Well, the Rays with a four run inning. They've opened a five run lead, 7 2. One 
one with some great two out base hitting by our key guys. Sousa Dickerson Morrison. Two balls and a strike. Two of them against lefties on lefties so not so surprising with our boy Dickerson who's been hitting everybody. The Rays have put 10 of their last 13 hitters on base. Wow. That's crazy. A tap down to third. Suarez with the throw to first to retire the side. Eight men come to the plate. The Rays score four and lead by five. Seven two. have opened a 7-2 lead on the Reds. Time for our T-Mobile Unlimited Baseball break. The next team coming into Tropicana Field after the Reds leave, the Baltimore Orioles. And boy, are they riding the struggle bus. Their last 38 games, they're just 13 and 25. And they have 17 straight times allowed five or more runs. And that bodes well for a Rays offense that has been scoring runs in bunches lately, including today, seven runs against the Reds looking to win this getaway game. It'll be Chris Archer and Ubaldo Jimenez in game one of that series right here at Tropicana Field, guys. All right, Rich, thank you. Yeah, the Rays have built this uh, five run lead now, trying to win another series. Be with you at 6:30, right here on Fox Sports Sun Friday. The Rays and the Orioles open that weekend series. You know that when Rich was at Syracuse University, I think before the scooter thing, they called them Jumbo. I think it was Jumbo first. Really? Yeah. And then, then it got changed. It was, a yeah. man of many monikers. He, he is. He has a lot of nicknames. I don't know why, but you know. Want to know the count to Winker? So. That would be a good nickname. Winker, yes. I think that might have been his third nickname. He had a lot of fun over there. This one headed toward the corner and left, and Smith will play it on the carom. In the second base goes Winker with a leadoff double in the seventh inning for Cincinnati. Well, we got a little breathing room here, so uh, Jose Alvarado stays in this game and we try to get some. Basically, just corral some outs. We've talked about all the base runners the Rays have had, and the Reds now have put yes. five of their last eight hitters on base. Took them a little while to get going there. Rasmo had them collared for the first four innings or so, and then after the home run by Shebler, it, they've kind of started to get going a little bit. They, they, listen, they have a young, exciting team that. I, you know, if I'm in that Midwest area. Definitely a great baseball area of Cincinnati. I'd be, you know, I'd be excited to watch these guys play. They're not. They went through a really bad malaise there. Of those that 0 and 9, and hopefully they're going to lose this game too. But they've got some potential offensively. 
two strike count. Pitch in at 99. Ramirez worked five and a third. Diaz a third. Alvarado got a strikeout to end the sixth after giving up a hit. He's allowed two hits. And that ball, a swing and a miss in the dirt. And the throw down to first. Nice recovery there by Sucre to get that ball down there in time to record the out. Peraza, a strikeout in the first out of the inning. And over to third, advances Winker. Wow. They Check this play out. You know, he's kind of nonchalant back there as far as the type of person he is. But what a cat and what an arm he has behind the plate. Sucre is just a beast. Look at the almost like incredible whip like arm once he gets to that. But obviously, in order to get to that whip like arm, Dwayne, you have to be able to be athletic enough to position yourself. And he did a great job. Block, get to it, whip throw. Top of the order, Billy Hamilton. Fastball upstairs. Here's the thing, I know the UNBA have done a great job of, of talking about this the last few years, but everybody that comes out of the pulpit, pretty much everybody, throws 99 now. I mean, it's like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, you go back, and you don't have to go that many years back where if a guy threw 92 or 93, it was significant. Ground ball chopped toward the middle. Backhanded. Featherston, a nice play and the stretch to the outfield side by Morrison. A good play right there. Winker scores. But the Rays take the second out on Hamilton. Trade the uh, the run for an out any day right now when you're up seven too late in the game. Very nice play. What you don't want to happen here is to not get the guy out at first and give up the run. So we'll trade it. 7-3, two outs, and hopefully hold them down. But yeah, everybody, I mean, righties, lefties, it's it's just, if you don't throw over 95, especially as a reliever, it's a little different with, with starters maybe, even though some of those young guys are all throwing that hard too, but relievers are crazy right now. This pitch is a strike into Stanette. When I was playing, I remember like, Randy Myers would come in and throw 96. And I'd be like, ooh, wow, that's hard. Woolers would yeah. hit 99. And uh but you know, Lee Smith. That was it. Everybody else is around 92, 93. One and one to count to Scooter Jeanette. He has a base hit and the run scored. Go. He tried to take it back. And Jeanette went for it. Take another look at that. Oh. Oh. No, yeah, you. Uh huh. Sorry, kid. He likes to chase the high fastball. He got struck out earlier in the game with the high fastball. See if they go there again. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs with a run already home. The Rays lead by four, top of the seventh. Strike three call. Slider caught him looking. Seventh inning stretch time. Seven three Rays.
Wednesday showdown is driven by GMC. Rays coming in to hit in the bottom of the seventh inning. They led 1 0, 3 0, 3 1, 3 2, 7 2, and now 7 to 3. They send Daniel Roberts into the plate to open the home half of the frame. He takes a strike from Storm. Known the kid Drew Storm for a long time since he was a teenager, actually. I worked with his dad on radio. This way, a little tap foul, too. I was talking to him yesterday. I'm goofing with him. I go, you remember when I beat you at horse and basketball? He goes, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want you to remind me of that. He was a young kid at Stanford freshman year. He's had a nice uh, career. He kind of hiccuped there for the last couple of years, but I think he's found a little bit of a home here in Cincinnati, having a decent year. How about that pitch right there? Yeah. The slider just turned the corner. Oh, he's got big boy breaking pitches, and he dots his fastball pretty well. But his big thing is that he's not afraid and he can use his breaking pitches at any time. Look at this one right here. Great, smart kid. As I said, he went to Stanford and had a great career over there. And he was doing real well with Washington and then they hit a wall a little bit trying to get back at it. Anderson swings and misses. I'm out in front. It was fun being down there uh, yesterday. I mean, other than the far part that I, I I didn't I didn't I didn't get Did a you chance starve to, to death. Yeah, I starved to death. I had water, but but other than that, I'm okay. You know, but no, it was a lot of fun because it's good to see the break. You know, you're talking about that slider and that curveball. You know, like see the break it, breaking pitches a lot closer and how hard some of these kids throw. There's a shot back into left field. Duvall will run out of room. That baby's gone. Featherston has hit his second home run in a Rays uniform. And they tack on another run. You know, we started the game today. We were like, all right, well, hey, there's no Longo and no Colby Rasmus. And I'll tell you what, the mothers will lead us because it's been. Great job by Featherstone. Great job by Trevor Plouffe. Got himself a home run. So some of the newer guys are helping out. Fastball right. Well, it looked like a little changeup actually. Just left it out of the plate and hammered it. So it's an 8-3 game. Here's Borges in the center field. That will hang up as Hamilton runs in under it to make the catch. So Borges two for four today after that line drive. Out to center. Another look at the Featherston home run. Not known for his power, Featherston, but he stayed sealed that changeup, but he stayed, kept his hands behind him. He dropped that front foot and he goes, okay, wait, then explode. And good things happen when you stay back on a ball. Pitch is a strike to Supre. Well, the Rays have scored against every Cincinnati pitcher now in this game. It's one and one. Not to mention they've answered back aggressively the last two innings after Cincinnati at least been able to scratch a run. Came back with four and they score a run last inning and both make up for it. Two balls and a strike. Fourteen hit buried onslaught for the Rays, which is typical for them. It's going to short stop. Arrazes throw to first in time. Rays are out in the seventh, but they pick up another run on the home run from Taylor Featherston. And the Rays have built an eight to three lead at the end of seven.
accumulated 14 hits, a couple of home runs in today's Cold Heart Packs, brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. As we take a look at the American League rankings there, the Rays third in the league in runs, and now with the two home runs, they've taken over first place in that department with 115, Houston 114, and New York, the Yankees have 112. Rays first in walks. Second in extra base hits and third in slugging percentage. Those are just outstanding numbers to change from one season to another to be this good. This pitch. Joey Votto tries to check and runs in on him and he fouls it against Tommy Hunter. Hard throwing right hander, pitcher number four for the Rays. Tommy Hunter starting to get it here, starting to feel it. Hopefully, going to be a big addition to this drive for the Rays because they're going to need the Tommy Hunter types, the guys that can come in and bridge the gap to a column A or, or maybe close out a game like this when you're up five right now. Hunter pitched an inning last night. Two and one with Joey Votto, Duvall next, then Suarez. That one looked good. Three and one. Fourteen hits for the Rays, Dwayne, and Every single starter has got at least one, led by our boy Susan Jr. with three knocks. Now Hunter trying to get Votto here to begin the eighth and loses him. Fifth walk given up by Ray's pitching. Crush home runs and dominate in your very own derby competition in the official MLB.com home run derby game. On the App Store and a Google Play. Swing for the fences against more than 10 million players from around the world as your favorite Derby All Star. Download Home Run Derby for free today. Adam Duvall, Falligate, strike one. You know, we're talking about hard throwers, and it seems that almost everybody is 95 plus. And I, I had put together a couple of little notes about that just because it, you, know, you notice that trend. You go back to 08, as fairly recent as that. Yeah. When we think about that 08 club yeah, we were right talking there. about earlier. Yeah. There were 14 starting pitchers. In the major leagues, who averaged 93 or more on their fastball. This one headed toward the corner, and Souza tries to lay out but cannot squeeze it. The ball loose. He gets it back toward the infield, and he's down in the right field corner. Votto goes to third. Duvall winds up at second. And now he's picked himself up, Souza Jr. And uh, apparently he's okay, but I think they're going to. Want to take a look at him to make sure he's trying to wave off the training staff. Let's take a look at this again. I, he was playing shaded a little bit towards right center. Great bit right here. He had it. What happens is that once you dive into this turf, remember it's not. It doesn't give. It might look like grass and dirt and all that, but it's not. So it jars your shoulders a little bit. And it's a little painful. That was a, that was a long run. Thankfully the ball just bounced right to him so but he's okay. He's Sousa man. He's sometimes indestructible. Well Harker went out there wanted to make sure sure he was fine. He waving him off but uh, check him out just to make sure. So it's second and third all of a sudden here in the eighth inning. One thing you're learning uh, that we're all learning about this uh, Cincinnati lineup 
Yeah. They don't go away. They don't. They don't, Dwayne. It's impressive. They uh, even in this bad malaise that they've been in. I mean, if you look at their numbers, it's not like their offensive output dropped dramatically. It was just maybe a little bit, maybe 10 percent. It's their starting pitching that has embarrassed them. But other than that, they can swing the bats. Ball on to Suarez. So second and third, nobody out. Well, we saw last night it's difficult to put Close this team out. away. Yeah. Fun team to watch for offense, that's for sure. Chop third, foul ball. We had to pick up. I will say one thing that we've been able to do is keep these two guys fairly quiet in this series. Duvall, who is a hammer home run hitter type potential, and Eugenio Suarez, another guy that high on base percentage, good average, got some pop. Let's hope it keeps going with that trend because we don't. We don't need a scare, nor do we need to even have to wake up Mr. Alex Colomay, to be honest with you. You want to try to see if he can slumber for a day and enjoy a day, an extra day off here. Foul ball, that moves Billy Hatcher out of the way. Shades off the stands. It's two and two. Column A. What he says that he knows that he may be needed today and he's ready. He's got a day off coming up. He's had some movement down there in the bullpen. Chase Whitley. Is up. So he'll start to get loose. Full count, three and two. Tommy got in a little bit of trouble last night when he came in. He first got two outs and then he got in a little bit of trouble, but this time kind of right off the bat here a little bit. Needs to make a good pitch. These I wouldn't even mind doing the old trading a, an out for a, a run for an out right here. Boy. Yeah, you, you get the, this late, you're counting outs. Swing and a miss. A big cut on the big fastball. Suarez out on strikes, and there's that first out. And the 11th strikeout to raise pitching in this game. Big swings get Harper, big strikeouts, and that was a big swing on a 3 2 pitch. Trying to make it a three run homer right there, and we were able to call, call her uh, Eugenio Suarez pretty much in this three game series. Well, Rays fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can certainly stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app and take Fox Sports Sun and Rays Baseball with you wherever you go. Scott Shebler, the right fielder. One and oh. Two and oh. Both bullpens busy with. Up in the Rays bullpen, Blake Wood has joined Ariel Hernandez. We were impressed with Hernandez yes. and his arm. And we saw him <laughs> in the game here, uh, actually last, last night. Last night, yeah, he, he's uh, that kid's got some exciting stuff. 99 with an incredible slow slider. 3 0 here to Shebler. A compliment. Raisel Iglesias is their closer. Thankfully, we only saw once 
COVID and we won't be seeing again because when he comes in, it's lights out. It means the game's over. That's ball four. The bases are loaded. So troublesome inning here for Tommy Hunter. Kevin Cash will make a move coming out of the dugout on his way to the mound with an eye toward Whitley in the bullpen. We'll be back in a moment. Presented by Jeep. Now the Rays trying to add a run or two here and there, trying to put a little distance between these two clubs. The Rays scored four in the sixth, another run in the seventh inning. But the Cincinnati offense will not go away, and they've loaded the bases with only one out. And Chase Whitley, who frankly, didn't spend a lot of time in the bullpen getting ready. He got a late call there and now could be an early call as it turns out here with the bases loaded. I think manager uh, Cash was not liking what he was seeing with Tommy Hunter. He looked over there and they told him that he was ready. Chase said he was ready. So he was ready to take Mr. Tommy Hunter out and put a guy that has thrown very well this year for the Rays. Been uber consistent. And he throws a good fastball that he spots in an outstanding changeup. Devin Masarocco, the first pitch is a fastball for a strike. No one on this Cincinnati roster has hit against Whitley. So he's got that going for him to begin with. That helps uh, immensely. Even Joey Votto hasn't run across him. Huh? How about that? Uh, yeah, Chase has got some pretty dynamic stuff, keeps you off balance. It's popped up, foul ball, headed straight back. The count is two strikes. That's what we were talking about right there. He pops you with a really cool fastball on the outside corner, and then he comes back. Great long limbs, arm speed for him with that changeup. So he uses the long legs and the long right arm, and even the front arm to kind of give you a lot of stuff. And that arm speed stays the same. It looks just like the fastball, and it, and you just. Miss hit it. And a cut and a miss. Well, fastball to begin with, and then right back to the bread and butter with the change, and he strikes him out with it. The key to that hold at bat, honestly, or that whole thing for him, was it was not missing with the fastball outside to start that at bat. Once he had him 0-1, then he can play with him. And he already got him not only ahead in the count, but also he's got him gauging the speed of his fastball when really it's the changeup that's going to beat you. Jess Winker. He opened the seventh with a double, scored a run. Outside. 
not trying to jinx anybody here or Kirk Gowdy at it all, but I do like this guy swing a lot. You know, as a youngster, has not hit a home run yet in the major leagues. I'm just saying. He is out in front of that changeup. I'm one and one. I'm double jinxing him. See, I'm <laughs> putting it out there so that he doesn't do it. But that was a great changeup right there. This kid hasn't seen this uh, in the minor leagues. I mean. Chase Whitley is something special with that pitch. The ground ball headed to second. Featherston will make the throw to first. And a great job by Whitley to come in to get the strikeout and the ground out. Middle of the eighth, 8 3 raise. Go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics, undisputed with Skip and Shannon, weekdays from 9:30 a.m. to noon, that's Eastern Time, only on FS1. Ariel Hernandez takes over. We were impressed with him when he entered the game last night. He is the fifth pitcher of the game here today for Cincinnati. Alex Smith. The fly ball into foul territory, and boy, that ball he, he just yeah. did stay foul. Duvall over there had to reach back to make the catch. Duvall cannot wait to get on the bus and get out of this. He's having some troubles. So with the one away and Corey Dickerson coming up, let's check in with Rich again. Thanks, Dwayne. As you well know, contrary to popular belief, no arrest as Destrada, but the show must go on. Rays Live, the post game, brought to you by W.B. Mason, will be right after this contest is over. It'll be myself and Doug Wechter giving you all the action, recapping the game. We'll talk to Steven Souza on his heroics from the three spot in the lineup, and you'll hear from the victorious manager, Kevin Cash, if the Rays indeed hold on. We'll see you for the post game. All right, Corey Dickerson goes for the first pitch. Flips it into center and Hamilton is there to make the catch hit the deck after the grab and Dickerson is out number two. Ball kind of knuckled on him a little bit but the speed there stayed with it. He's trying to gauge it if it was going hard or slow it's going slow and comes out and gets it he's fast as buffer and I'll tell you that much he's a trip. Yeah Dougie Weck I'm just impressed that he's uh, recovered from that gorging that he did at the uh, home plate club and I was sitting there just wishing that I had something but I got nothing out of this thing you know by the way I'm you know so many people all these years I've been here and all my friends at the home plate club you think no one would bring you something any yeah 
Any age at not, all. Not that age. I mean, <laughs> even Sousa Jr. was up to the plate here. He didn't. Come. He would walk by me. I didn't even get a peanut. Yeah, look, there's Danielle. Um, all my people there, the, the Jack and Barry Critchfield. Nobody. High right, fly ball off the bat of Susie Jr. in the center. Hamilton backs up to make the catch on this one. And the Rays, for the first time since the second inning, are retired in order. To the ninth inning we go. The Rays have accumulated 14 hits today, eight runs, a couple of home runs. The first one was struck by Trevor Plouffe in the fourth. Taylor Featherston hit the other one. And here in the ninth, it will be Jose Peraza leading off against Chase Whitley. The pitch is a strike. A couple of uh, not your usual suspects. Leading the way for the Rays today, as far as the home run wise, is the new guy Trevor Plouffe and fairly new guy and Taylor Featherstone. Featherstone, uh, nice to see. I mean, you talked a lot about how what is important to have diversity and depth, and uh, that's one thing I think the Rays are trying to reach that in their in their upper management. They're trying to get that combination. Here's the 0-2. Liner into center field. Borges is there to make the catch. One gone. The Rays will have a day off tomorrow and pick up play Friday with Chris Archer on the hill. Archer, Faria, and Oda Rizzi due to pitch in the series against Baltimore. Here's Hamilton. Strike. Nice job by Chase Whitley. Yeah. He's coming in and just strike throwing. He's got a devastating changeup pitch that is out pitch. And he came in with the bases loaded, nailed that down. And Little number down to third. Whose throw is there in time. So Hamilton is retired. He has a chance to pick up a save, by the way. That's beautiful. All of them deserves it. Here's the pitching matchup for the. Uh, Baltimore series Archer against Waldo Jimenez in the uh, first game Korea against Dylan Bundy and then as we mentioned Oda Rizzi the third game on Sunday and his pitching opponent will be Chris Tillman struggling O's on the mound so then hopefully try to take advantage of that like the Rays have taken advantage of the struggling 
Ray Reds starters. Pitch is foul. Now play. Tillman came off that DL and not in greatest of fashions because he's one in five with like an eight ERA. That's uncharacteristic. Net walk scored in the sixth, one for four. Whitley trying to close it out. It's one and one. Meanwhile, the Rays are trying to win another series, and that's what it's all about. They're yes, sir. wrapping up the string of 12 series, and if they can get the final out here, they will have lost only one series in that stretch. Splitting three and winning eight, and there's a ground ball that should do it. Morrison to Whitley, and the Rays win it a one, two, three, ninth inning. It's an eight three final. The Rays take two out of three from the Cincinnati Reds, and they go to 39 and 36. For Restus Destrada, Dwayne Stats, hope you've enjoyed the telecast. We've got. Rich and Doug coming up on Rays Live, the post game presented by W.B. Mason. Rays are winners in this one, eight to three.